Hey, how are you guys doing? My name is Scott Biddle. I am so excited about what is getting ready to happen right there in your area. I'll be there next Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, and Sunday evening. Okay? So this is, let me, let me give you just a, a small glimpse of what I believe the revival is. And, and I, I know that you guys are getting ready. I know that you're having some, some prayer meetings. I know that you are, are gathering people around. And I want to tell you something great. I want to tell you that there's absolutely nothing you can do, nothing that you can do to get ready. But why are we doing all this prayer? Okay, so there's one thing. You can pray, but the, the cool thing is, is it just takes you going to God and asking for His Spirit to be part of what God is doing. You see, there's nothing physically. It doesn't matter what kind of food you have there. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes you're wearing. It doesn't matter about any of that stuff. It's all about God. And it's taken our focus from, from what we know and what we try to do to get things done and letting God be God. L l let me give you kind of an idea, okay? There's this guy named Elijah. Elijah in, I believe it's 1 Kings chapter 18. Okay? So Elijah goes and he sees his people, the Israelites, and they are all scattered, and they are all trying to figure out what's going on, and they are, they are, they are worshiping other gods. Kind of like what we would do where we worship, I don't know, we call it whatever you want, whether it's people, whether it's you know a particular basketball team, whether it's, it's money, whether it's all these things that we take that we put over top of who God really is. And they're worshiping these idols, just like we do today. And so Elijah comes in and he says, no, 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 no. Uh, let me show you, Let's, let me remind you who God is, the one true God. And he says, I want you to go and I want you to get your 450 prophets of Baal. So these 450 prophets come in. And they are coming in and, and he says, I challenge you. I challenge you to this. Are you ready? He says, I challenge you. I, I want you to build an altar. And I'm going to have you put this, this sacrifice on top of the altar. And then I want you to take your time and I want you to pray to your gods. And I want you to say, I want you to gods. The gods need to send fire down to burn up the sacrifice. And so you get these 450 people, and they pick out their, their choice bull, I think it was, and they put on top of this altar, and they begin to shout and yell, Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal, please send down your fire so we can burn up, so we can show these people who that you are truly God. And they shouted for hours and hours and hours, and nothing happened. By noon, all of a sudden, this is what Elijah starts doing. <laughs> you guys... <laughs> Uh, he starts provoking them and teasing them. Uh, I don't think it's working, guys. Ooh, it's not working. Uh, sorry, come on, it's not working. Oh, <laughs> you guys look awfully silly. Because you're yelling and screaming. There's absolutely nothing happening. So they get to, to the point where all of a sudden, instead of going from yelling and shouting and saying, Please send down f fire. All of a sudden they start taking out knives and they're cutting themselves. And they're thinking, maybe God will react to this. Maybe Baal, their God, will react to this cutting and cutting themselves. And so Elijah finally looks over and he says, uh, time out, guys. Time out. It's my turn. Actually, it's God's turn. And he says, okay, he builds an altar and he cuts up his, his bull and he puts it on the, on the altar there. And he has people go and fill up 12 buckets of water and dump it on there just to prove that this wasn't somehow fashioned so that he would win. So they dump all these buckets of water all on top of this altar. And so he puts the water down and he puts the bull down and he soaks the whole thing. And there's a trench all soaked up in water. And he looks up and he says, God, just to show who you are, I ask that you will send your holy fire down to burn up your sacrifice. In a matter of moments, all of a sudden this fireball straight from heaven comes crashing down and burns up the altar, burns up the stones, sucks up all the water that was dumped on top. And it was God's fire that consumed it all. 
And as this happened, all the people, all the Israelites were all surrounded all around the outsides watching all this stuff going on. The 450 prophets of Baal are all sitting there and they just are amazed and they're in wonder. And they look and they say, God, you truly are the one true God. You see, the point is this. We can build our altar. We can, we can do everything that we can to put the stones on top of the right stones. We can say the right things. We can, we can prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, and be ready as an altar and sacrificing ourselves and saying, God, it is only you that can change things. We can do everything under the sun. We can plan the right potlucks. We can cook the right things. We can put on the right deodorant. We can put on the right perfume and you know put the makeup on the best that we can. We can come and we can look good. But we all know, God, that it's not about us. It's not about what we physically can do. But we are saying we want to open ourselves to you. And Lord, let your fire burn. Send your fire to burn this place thinking that there were probably people back when Elijah pulled this whole thing off, when God sent down the fire. There were people that were probably back there, that weren't even there in, in the arena of watching what was going on. But there were probably people that were in the neighboring towns, and they were cooking there, and they were getting things ready. But I know that probably as soon as that fire was sent down, something changed. Something was different, and they knew without being part of it, without being in that area, without being on that hillside watching, sitting on the fence, watch what was going on, that they knew that something had changed, and they probably wanted to be a part of it. And as I think about this revival, as I think about what revival really is, it is the dropping of God's spirit. It is the bringing of God's fire in a way that can consume only a way that God can consume. And that is what we are praying for. That is what we're getting ready for because it's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can physically do to get ready, but it's God's spirit and his fire that's going to take care of everything. And so we can do everything we want to to prepare. We can call the right people. We can, we can cook the right stuff. But I want to tell you that as soon as God drops his fire and his spirit on this place, nothing will ever be the same. The people that might not even be at the church at that time will be changed and will be looking. They'll be searching out. What is this difference? What is this fire that has come that I know is in this atmosphere that I'm feeling is so different? We just need to be ready. We need for our spirits and our hearts to be clean. I just ask that you pray. Pray that life will never be the same. That God's Spirit will come, which is the only way revival will ever happen. That His fire will fall from heaven and consume us. That we can think of nothing else, that we can do nothing else that we can go nowhere else without knowing and believing that He is there and it changes our whole outlook. It changes the way that we see things. It changes the way that we do things. It changes everything because it consumes us. Are you ready to be consumed by God?